Beautiful morning to you and welcome to the news at 7. I am David Opohasele. The headlines, World Bank report on reviving moribund industries in Anambra to be ready by June this year. Anambra Community and Social Development Agency and World Bank complete initial startup disbursement of funds to 10 benefiting communities. IMF expresses confidence on growth of Nigeria's economy. Japan rearrests former Nissan boss Gerson for fraud allegations. The World Bank and the International Finance Corporation delegates who have been in the state for on-the-spot assessment of industries in the state says the report of their findings will be ready by June this year. The delegates stated this during a tour of select industries in Nnewi. Correspondent Eji Kabana is our guide. Recall that at the state government's instance, the delegates had assessed a number of industries at Onisha. The team comprising the delegates, a team from the Anambra Investment Promotion and Protection Agency, ANSIPA, among others, visited Innocent Motors, Chikasin Group in Newe, and Linden Farm at Ibariam. Speaking at Innocent Motors, the private sector specialist of World Bank Group, Mrs. Anita Okemini, said the World Bank will be excited to work with private manufacturers and the state to think and fashion out ways to improve the enabling business environment in the state. So the purpose of our visit is to first understand the challenges and then take that back to try and think through what the potential solutions will be. So we've heard what everyone has said, we've heard, we've seen the challenges that, that they have here. So the next step now is putting that into the country private sector diagnostics and then coming back and really engaging with the private sector players such as Innocent Motors to think through how we can utilize what we've learned to bring about some change. How the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Anambra Investment Promotion and Protection Agency, Mr. Jide Ikako, stressed that the government's involvement in the tour is in line with its primary role of providing an enabling business environment, saying that the team have gone round in a bid to understand challenges facing industries in the state. I think, you know, we can never do enough. So our job is to keep on trying, to keep on listening and to keep on addressing these issues as they come. No two businesses are the same, even though they may seem to have recurrent problems. And so what we do is we sit down on a business-to-business -business basis and then formulate broad policy guidelines and then intervene when we can to make sure that these things are effective. No more challenge in Nigeria. Everybody knows that this um, energy situation is not so good. And also, they are charging manufacturers in South is very expensive tariff on electricity. So we want our price to be the same price that other states are paying. We are, they are charging us for the three naira uh, in, in this south is so it's very expensive for us to manufacture. For do a recycling plant and uh, say for example, example coal. Uh, my exposure is some, something around 1.5 million, 2 million euros. By the time I think that I want to put the plant up. At Linden Farm Ibariam, the Commissioner for Agriculture, Mechanization and Export, Mr. Afam Mbanefo, stressed that production capacity has increased, but more can be achieved with international aid. The team later visited Koschari's farm, Anako, for further assessment. The country director of International Finance Corporation, Mr. Ibrahim Diko Adamo, Commissioner for Trade, Market and Wealth Creation, Mr. Christian Madubuko, the executive director at ANSEPA, Dr. Ifediora Amobi, among others, were part of the visit. AGK Abana, ABS News. The Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewolo, says the federal government budgeted 55 billion naira in the 2019 appropriation bill for the basic health care provision for all Nigerians. Professor Adewolo made this known during the official opening ceremony of the 15th biannual Nursing Leaders Conference held in Oka. Health correspondent Chibuzo Koe completes the report. Presented by the Director of Hospital Services, Federal Ministry of Health, Abuja, Dr. Joseph Amedu said that federal government officially launched the Basic Health Care Provision Fund for all Nigerians in January 2019. He explained that the fund, which will be shared by both the federal government and state governments that meet the requirements for assessing the fund, noted that it will help the government to give all Nigerians accessible, affordable, effective, and qualified 
qualitative health care system that can meet the health needs of the population. The this conference is coming up at a very auspicious time when the federal government of Nigeria, through the Grand Minister of Health, is making compelling reports to see that health is placed in the of all Nigerians. And therefore, it is the plan of the Holy Spirit to be in the news today on special occasion at opening ceremony of the Nursing Leaders Conference with the team repositioning nursing and moving to the focus for the achievement of universal health coverage. Declaring the week-long event opened, Governor Willow Biano, represented by the Commissioner for Health, Anambra State, Dr. Joe Akabike, thanked the council for finding the state worthy for the hosting of this year's event and made it clear that his administration has implemented health policies and programs as well as reforms that have given residents of the state qualitative and affordable health care system. That, uh, we are in line with what we are discussing today, the universal health coverage. But what we need in the first time for this means there should be a, 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 a sound health system in terms of governance, in terms of availability, in terms of cost. Because uh, most often our people spend out of pocket. And that has been the, what has been causing dilemma in health in Nigeria. And if we get it right for the first time, people assessing health without the cost of money, I can bet you that we will achieve health in each two minutes. In a keynote address, the head, Department of Nursing Sciences, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Professor Omolola Irinoye, urged nurses and midwives to upgrade their skills and adhere to international best practices to be at par with their global counterparts and warned against internal rivalry among them. Talk about good health and well being. He didn't talk about managing sickness, is it? Because we all know that it is cheaper to strive to attain health and to maintain wealth. And managing illnesses will just be a part of staying healthy and having a state of wealth. So everything that has to come into it will take up the signs of things. In a vote of thanks, the Secretary General and Registrar of the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, Raj Farouk Abubakar, appreciated Governor Obiano for hosting them and assured that the knowledge garnered at the end of the conference will help reposition the council for good. Others who gave goodwill messages at the conference were the Director of Nursing Services in the Anambra State Ministry of Health, Mrs. Dominica Abbott, the Chairman, Board of Directors of Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, Dr. Abosede Bola Ofi, and numerous other dignitaries. The traditional rule of Oka, Obi Gibson Mosu, was among the dignitaries that graced the occasion. In Oka, it's been Chibu Zoko here for ABS News. I'm moving on now from health sector to community development. Nsubwe and Nando communities in Anambra East Council area have benefited from the World Bank Assisted Community and Social Development Projects. The World Bank intervention is made possible by the Anambra State Government's counterpart funds, necessitating the coming on board of the agency geared towards poverty alleviation. ABS correspondent Chidemi Kanyon was there and now reports. The Anambra State Community and Social Development Agency's presence at Nsubwe and Nando is part of the first phase of their intervention in the two communities. Nsubwe was handed over on the spot the sum of 2,689,002 naira, being 30% of amount required to construct a six-classroom block for Nadi Primary School in Subway. Nando collected check for 1,165,387 naira 50 kobo for the rehabilitation of a five-classroom block at Community Secondary School, Nando. Addressing the communities while presenting the checks, the general manager, Anambra State Community and Social Development Agency, Mr. Chu Dimojiku, noted that the fund being disbursed is to increase access to better life through improved social services where projects follow demand and community driven approach. We only come to assist you if you make a demand for us to come, come to assist you. First is for us to sensitize you, uh, for you to know the possibilities, the procedures and processes of the project. We we'll now ask you to go and think and then show interest if you so desire. 
Receiving the checks, the chairman and the Community Development Project Committee, Honorable Amobi Fokansi, and the vice chairman of the said committee in Nsuwe, Sir Isaac Okafor, pledged judicious use of the funds for the specific projects. And that very particular block room we are talking about, the roof have already been, some of them have already been removed. So when school children are studying inside, they find that rain are disturbing them. That's why we chose that project so that we renovate it so that children will have a very sound education. <laughs> Pledging their support, the President General of Nando, Chief Ignatius Aya Denono, and his Nsubo counterpart, Ichi Ogochuku Ogude, promised to supervise and see that the work is done with specification. It would be recalled that each community made a 10% contribution to the project, while the World Bank and the state government made the remaining 90% contribution. As you can see, this is a 5 classroom block that needs rehabilitation at Nando and with this we hope that what they have said they will keep to it by the time that is expected of them. From Nando in Anambra East Council area, I am Chidema Ikanyo reporting for ABS News. Construction work on the over 6 kilometer Nkwenugwuku Ulo Bareke or Bago Sile Road is poor to Enugwuku Expressway, Enugu Onicha Expressway is 90% completed. An engineer, Mr. Somde Adejila, stated this while explaining the extent of work on the road. Works correspondent Ngozi Obileri monitored the pace of work and on this project and now reports. When ABS arrived at the site, men of the construction firm handling the projects were seen stone pitching some of the culverts while stone pitching of some of the culverts have been completed. The road has seven culverts, four box culverts, a roundabout, and has a spur to Northia axis of the Enugu Onicha Express Road. The road has been asphalted from Nkwenugwuku axis of the road through Urubaleke, Obago Osile, up to about half a kilometer towards the Enugu Onicha Express Road, where one lane of the road has been asphalted. Meanwhile, the road has become motorable up to Express Road. Speaking to the ABS, an engineer at the site, Mr. Sunday Adejila, said the road started in 2014 is almost completed. Engineer Adejila appreciated government for being consistent in the provision of funds needed to execute the project. Working continually, um, there was a time, during, even while during the rainy season, we walk and um, throughout the rainy season. Then we were doing the gutter, the drainage the covert and then some other things that are involved. We have completed the, like the asphalt section now, at least by before now to next week, it will be completed. And here is this Enuguku, this North Yard Road now is where we are about to start. We are kind of like try just to fill the, the pothole that we are supposed to fill. A road user, Mr. Friday Eze, expressed happiness over the state of the road now, as he said that the road has eased traffic from Amobia to Enuguku. As anybody going to Abagana, if it's a Dunu, Eze Owole, among others, do not have to pass through Amobia. The spore to Nofia will commence soon. Manana Magano said, I said, I don't know what to do with the road. I don't know what to do with the road. I don't know what to do with the road. I don't know what to do with the road. I don't know what to do with the road. So, I don't know what to from Nkwenuguku, Urubaleke, Obago, Sile Road, I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has expressed a renewed confidence in the Nigerian economy. Its executive directors also held the economy's recovery signs such as reduced inflation and strengthened reserve buffers. According to its media chief for Africa, Lucy Mboto Fowder, IMF noted that Nigeria's real gross domestic product GDP increased by 1.9% in 2018, up from 0.8% in 2017. It said the headline inflation fell to 11.4% at end of 2018, the reflecting declining food price inflation and weak consumer demand. The fund also reflects a relatively stable exchange rate and tight monetary policy during most of 2018, but remains outside of central bank's target range of 6 to 9 percent. IMF also noted that record holdings of mostly short-term local debt and equity and the current account surplus lifted gross international reserves to a peak in April 
2018. The saying that there is a ability in disability was aptly demonstrated when at the headquarters of Anambra Broadcasting Service, pupils and students with one form of disability or the other came calling. There are pupils of St. Joseph's Inclusive Model School, Amakom, and students of Paul Secondary School and Deaf Unit, Amakom, both in our refute, Pusigo local government area, who are creating awareness on the need for inclusive education for children living with disabilities. Correspondent Njideko Koe covered the visit and now reports. Over 100 pupils and students of the two schools stormed ABS with placards of different inscriptions. We have right to inclusion. If you can't see my needs, who then is blind? And every child has the right to be educated, among others. Explaining the essence of their visit, their leader, Reverend Father Calistus Ajero, said that what they are doing is in line with We Ring the Bell campaign by Dutch based disability organization that works with partners around the world, which Vincentian Fathers, a Roman Catholic organization he represents, is a partner. Stop the barrier by creating in the school and admitting children with disability. The school should be run inclusive education that will welcome these children with disability. I want to announce it to the society today. A teacher at the school, Mr. Mecca Chuku, who is speech impaired, advised parents who has such children not to abandon them, but should send them to one of the all-inclusive schools to acquire knowledge and maximize their potentials. Open them up, pick them out, educate them, educate them, educate them, okay. So, when you lift them out, you know, they don't have many benefits, but they educate them, they to be able to feel to have. Some of the students and pupils told ABS their ambition and what they would like to be when they finish their education. A visually and hearing impaired student, Efunanya, said she would like to be a banker, while primary five pupil, Ike Chukumwankwo, with Down syndrome, said he will follow the way of his father, a barrister. Pascal Mweze in primary one chose to be a nurse, and Onyinyechi Chinemere called on parents of such children to send them to school for them to become what God destined them to be. In Oka, Njideka, Okoye, ABS News. We move on now to the foreign scene where Japanese prosecutors have rearrested Otto Tycoon Carlos Gossin on fresh allegations of financial misconduct as he slammed an outrageous and arbitrary detention and vowed he would not be broken. Officials raided the central Tokyo department of the 25-year-old Gassin, where he has stayed since winning bail last month after more than 100 days of detention on different charges. It was the latest twist in a roller coaster drama that has gripped Japan and the rest of the world since his shock arrest at a Tokyo airport on November 19. Prosecutors and Gossin said Gossin had been detained over transfers of Nissan funds totaling $15 million between late 2015 and the middle of 2018. The suspect Gossin used $5 million of that for personal expenditure. Uh, we move on now to the sporting world where, although two late goals from the boots of Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez rescued FC Barcelona from defeat on Tuesday night, most fans of the Catalan club were in unison describing Nigerian wonder kid Samuel Chukweze as the undoubted hero of the eight goal trailer in Villarreal. The Super Eagles player made, this, uh, made his debut for the national team in the long goal victory over Pharaohs of Egypt penultimate Monday in an international friendly in Asaba. Chukweza was deservedly voted man of the match of the Barcelona versus Villarreal clash, which ended 4-4. He scored one goal and assisted in two other goals for the Yellow Submarines, who were cruising to home win before Messi's magic changed the rhythm for the two teams to chair the spoils of the battle. Chukweza was commended especially for the way he unsettled the central defence pair of Samuel Umtiti and Clement Lenglet. Jody Alba's constant runs on the left flank were cut short because the Nigerian wonder kid never allowed him any breathing space. Before we wrap up the news, remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world 
by logging on to our website, www.absradiotv.com. You can like us at www.facebook.com slash absradiotv. Or you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Now, the main points again. World Bank report on reviving moribund industries in Anambra is to be ready by June this year. Anambra Community and Social Development Agency and World Bank have completed initial step top disbursements of funds to 10 benefiting communities. IMF has expressed confidence on the growth of Nigeria's economy. Japan has rearrested former Nissan boss Gassen for fraud allegations. And that is the story this morning. I am David Thank you for joining us this morning and good morning Anambra continues right after now.